Well, God is good. And all the time, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Uh, Well, welcome to worship this morning, and we're going to welcome those who are watching online on Facebook Live. It is good to see you here and worship with us, but we want to turn and welcome those who are uh, watching online for our first-time visitors. There's a tiny camera. We turn and wave and say hello to everybody in Facebook land. (laughs) Oh, they can still hear you a little. Remember, that this, this mic can pick you up just a little. So I uh, got a couple quick announcements. Our communion rail, uh, they had to call, and uh, it's, this is a, both a good and a weird problem, I guess. Uh, it's being delivered today at 1 p.m. Uh, now, I know myself and Tucker are going to be here to help offload it. We could really use an extra hand or two if that's possible. So um, it won't take you but a few minutes of your time and... Again, this is a 22-foot-long communion rail busted into three sections, so uh, the, they're going to install it on Monday morning. So that's the good news. We don't have to install it, but we do need some help getting it offloaded. So when we get out of worship, just if you want to go grab a quick bite to eat, and just, again, you'll probably only take about five or six minutes for us to offload it and put it in the church so that they can install it in here on um, Monday morning. And so that's my one quick announcement. If you can do that, come meet me with me after service. And like I said, many hands make a lighter load. So for those who are in the finance committee, we're meeting today at 5 p.m. And then the board meeting, of course, is the end of the month at uh, 4 p.m. Also, don't forget we are taking up our missional offering. So that's on next Sunday is our missional offering, our apportionments for our apportionments. We're already about $800 ahead on the year. So this is such a great time for us to stay ahead on the year, um, our total offering uh, for the year uh, for apportionment needs to be about $5,000. And so we, um, so uh, that's what we're trying to hit this year is 100%. It's a little bit more than that, but there's somebody that's already dedicated an amount to it. So that's only about $5,000 for us to hit our goal this year. So I believe that we're going to hit it by June. I really do. So, uh, so next Sunday, you'll be, be able to bring your offering and, and place it on the rail. So, so. Somebody got notified. Um, His circle, the membership drive, uh, pay attention to those announcements. And then also they're collecting for Ronald McDonald. And I believe it is his circle has changed their meeting time to Sunday at 3 p.m. And they will be meeting at February the 7th in the fellowship hall. Did I say that right? His circle. They're nodding correctly. Okay, good. So uh, we want to do that. And is there any other announcements that we need to make known this morning? So as soon as I ask you to do something, you're like, quiet. So, uh, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Well, good and gracious Heavenly Father, it is good to be in your house. And it is good to see some returning faces to worship this morning. Lord, we glorify you. We give you thanks and praise for your son, Jesus Christ, and what he's done for us. How he has set us free. And Lord, we just come today to give you thanks and to give you praise. And everybody said, Amen. And good morning to everybody today. Would you stand with me this morning as we stand to sing our call to worship? God is so good. Would you join me as we sing this? God is so good. Amen. Hey. 
morning, everyone. It's so good to see a, a good crowd here this morning. Uh, let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for your grace, your forgiveness, and most of all, Father, the love that you have for each of us. And Lord, if we would only love generously, be happy, live simply, care for others, and be kind, you'll take care of everything else, Father, if we would just do our part as you tell us all through your word to love one another. And Father, may we all pray for all the newly elected officials in our nation today, Father, that they will seek wisdom from you and will do what is pleasing to you, Father. And Lord, I just lift up all the people with COVID today around the world and help us to use good judgment and keep us safe from this disease, Lord. And Father, we ask you to come into our service today and help us to hear your word with an open mind and an open heart. And Father, may we all pray that prayer that you taught us so long ago with thankful hearts this morning. And now if you'll join me for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Open up our service with our first hymn today with a hymn that was all of us was probably raised with. Love lifted me. Would you join me as we sing? singing it loud today. Amen. Amen. There must be a song in your heart this morning. Well, let us declare our faith with the Spirit of the Lord as there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
I want to remind you this morning before we uh, get to our offering, this is your time to prepare for your giving. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and take a, a moment for prayer requests. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Bob uh, Matthews this morning. Uh, we also want to pray for the Tool family. That was a family that recently joined our church, and they've not been able to join us in worship because the family has come down with COVID, um, and they are not doing really well right now, and so they just need your prayers. Uh, so that's the um, Alyssa, Annabelle, and Abby. Uh, so be in prayer, and Jeremy, of course. Uh, so be in prayer for the Tool family. Do we have any other prayer requests that we need to bring to the body this morning? Miss Miss Jean. Michael Harrison. Mm. Awesome. Brain surgery on Friday and coming home already. Wow. Incredible. Miss Barb. Oh, no. We'll be in prayer for Robert and Nancy Springfield this morning. Uh, continue to pray for Dan McConaughey as he recovers from COVID. Uh, he was gone for over, I believe it was 155 days. And so he's still um, still got a long road to recovery. So, um, mm. correct. Yeah, as Sylvia as this. In fact, I already took that prayer request once this morning, but that's fine. Oh, no. Miss Carol. We'll be in prayer for the Heathcote clan. Dwayne Heathcote has COVID. Wilbur, I think I saw it. Barbara. Barbara. We'll be praying for you this week, Miss Pat and Sonny. All right. Well, uh, we'll continue to be in prayer, of course, so we know more and more. It seems like in the spring of last year, we didn't know anybody with COVID, and now it's we know lots of people that have had it, okay? And so um, as, a, as just a word of caution, continue to do your best, social distance, wear your mask uh, whenever possible, and sanitize and wash your hands. And, uh, and then if you're a- able to go get the shot, another option for you go get the shot that's the only advocation I will do from here from the pulpit I'm not telling you you have to I'm just saying if we want to beat this disease it's either, it's going to be wearing masks and getting the shot and and hopefully that enough of us get a herd immunity that we can defeat this but the most important thing that you can do is just not live in fear so that's the thing that we we have to do as Christians is not let this uh, keep us in fear amen well let us go to the Lord uh, and pray over these names, and uh, we're going to pray over our offering as well. Well, good and gracious Heavenly God, we come, and first we bring you these offering of names that we have mentioned this morning, people that we love and people that we know. We lift them up to you, and we just ask, Father, that you would do by the work of the Holy Spirit only what you can do. We ask that you would move in their life and that you would bring healing and restoration to their physical body, to their minds, and to their worries and doubts, but physical to their healing and walking in wholeness. We ask for you to do this by the blood of the Lamb this morning. And Lord, now we come to bring and worship you through our offering and through our tithe. Lord, we ask that you would bless and continue to bless this church. We ask you now that you would bless each and every one of these gifts, even those who gave online and those who couldn't be here in person, who dropped it off at the fellowship. We ask you to bless that offering too. And so, Lord, we come to bring you our tithe and to worship you through our giving. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and everybody together said, you may bring your tithe.
Would you stand for the doxology? Today's scripture is from the Gospel of Mark, second chapter, verses 1 through 12. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately gathered together, many gathered together, so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. When they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven you. And some scribes were sitting there reasoning in their hearts why does this man speak blasphemies again like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, Take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up his bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. The word of God for the people of God. Well, God is good all and all the time. God is good. Amen. Someone said I didn't say that last week, so I want to make sure we said it double this week. So, uh, well, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning, shall we? Heavenly Father, we come and we just ask that your Holy Spirit would give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying to your people. Lord, we have indeed worshipped you in our singing through our prayers. And this morning we want to continue that act of worship by leaning in and listening to your word. Let it be alive and living in us. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody together said... So, I don't know about you, but I love watching these shows on HGTV. Who are my HGTV fans, right? Uh, I love shows about restoration, all right? Like, whether, I, I don't care what you're restoring. I don't care if it's a piece of pottery or, or what, but I love a show about restoration. <laughs> Apparently, there is an angry thing in the sound system this morning. And it might be because I have my cell phone next to my microphone. So we'll see if that's the trick. It's it. Okay, all right. But I, I love watching them. They're, they're, they're the, they're, you know, there's the, when they restore the old-timey cars and, uh, you know, they, they show up as nothing but like a bucket of bolts and then they turn it into something beautiful. And you're always like, there's no way this takes an hour. We know it takes weeks, right? But they, they turn it into something usable and beautiful, and it's incredible to see how they do this. But I love, and I'm just being, I'm going to keep it really real this morning. I love the shows about the old homes. You know what I'm talking about? But... 
it's not the end that I love. It's the beginning. Not the part when they walk in and they're like, this place needs Jesus. <laughs> it needs a carpenter. It's termites holding hands. That's not my favorite part. My favorite part is when they bust out the sledgehammers, right? Because some of you are like, yes, yes, tell me more. And, and they swing it and you hear it break. I mean, if you all know that it is easier to break things than it is to fix things. Because anybody who fixes things for a living can tell you it is much easier to break them. So, and they're thankful because then they have a job. But I, I, I just re- kind of think to myself, like, as I see him sling that sledgehammer, like, Lord, it's okay. You can transport me through the television right now. I want to swing it because I can tell you that it is fun to demolish things. Like, I used to do that as part of my, my job growing up. Like, when I would go work with some of my cousins who were in that industry, and that was the part they hired me for. They're like, well, we know you can't be trusted with a paintbrush, but you can break stuff. So here you go. And it was fun. It brought a little bit of a stress relief. But the real work begins there, right? The people come together and they use all their time, their talents, their gifts, and they make something beautiful out of what was destroyed. They make something happen and it's uh, incredible. I love, of course, the end when they do the big reveal. You know, I remember that one show where they're like, move that bus. And, and then, but th- those aren't as good as the ones that you see the restoring, right? To see something be put back to the way that it was even better than before. That is the beauty of restoration. It is a labor of love. It is a labor of commitment. And it is a labor that is intensive. But when it's done and it's done correctly, it's wonderful and it's beautiful. This morning in Mark's gospel, we see a story that we ourselves are familiar with. I laughed as I looked about this time last year, we had a sermon series about carrying people on mats. And I said, Lord, you have a sense of humor to bring this back around again to us. That the importance of mat carrier faith. In fact, we were excited. In fact, I know Carol is excited because I saw her take about three or four of those uh, dozen of the cards and, and say, I'm bringing people to church, baby. Come on. And she was excited. No, she maybe didn't say baby, but that's fine. I exaggerated to make it sound cooler. I'm sorry. So, but, but we were excited. And then, of course, you know, we had all these, this great momentum and people were being brought. And then COVID hit and it stopped us in our tracks for a little bit. And I mean a little bit. But we figured it out. We said, okay, we can't do that. So we're going to bring people online to worship. And then we started gathering on the lawn for worship. And I'm looking forward to those uh, doing that one more time in the spring when it, the weather is really nice. Because I don't know about you, but it just felt right. It felt like, hey, we should worship outdoors a little bit more often. So Tucker's like, no, I don't want to drag the equipment outside. But I wanted to tell you that I know that some of you today in this room have a drug problem. Somebody in your life drug you to church. I see the relief on your face. You're like, like, where is preacher going this morning? Is he about to start condemning us? To, no, um, you're good. Breathe. Like, how did he know? Um, some of you had a drug problem, and some of you might need to repent at this altar later because you were really nervous just then. <laughs> but, but some of you had a drug problem. Like, you didn't have the problem of worrying about how you were going to get to church on Sunday because somebody drug you to church by the ear, by the pinky, by the toe. Some of y'all got drugged by the belt, right? Because you were going to be in church. Your mama and your daddy made sure you were in church. In fact, my teenager's are like, is it okay to say at school I have a drug problem? So, no, don't say that because your teacher will automatically begin calling this. Just don't do it, okay? But you had somebody that loved you and cared for you and brought you to the house of God. They brought you where Jesus was, where the people were celebrating Jesus and there was teaching going on. In the story we see in Mark's gospel, we see a story of a group of disciples People being a disciple, I told you, I'm always every Sunday, bring it back home. Be a disciple, make disciples, serve with love. These people love this man. I mean, how could you not? I mean, the room is crowded. 
There's no room. And, and, and dare I say, they, were, they weren't home wreckers, but they were roof wreckers for sure. I told you last year that the great faith, that, that, in fact, the people were moved by the faith that they had in Jesus already. So much so that they began to wreck somebody's roof. I'm like, so one of them either A, had some general carpentry and roof skills, or one of them was the insurance agent that was like, it's fine, we'll write it off later. But they just said, no matter what, we've got to get him to Jesus. Whether it was for the teaching or for the healing, we've got to get him to Jesus. So they carried him in, and we know the story. And I can't imagine, I'm sorry, like, if you imagine uh, that this is the only time in, in, in worship that it's ever been interrupted and a good thing happened, right? So uh, you could imagine the roof peeling back and the dirt falling down, and Jesus in the midst of this sees us, and he looks up and he's like, what in the world is happening? You know, you know, Jesus looks in this moment, and it says that he was moved by their faith. I think we need to have that reminder sometimes that faith without action is dead. Faith without action is dead. And these guys were stepping out in faith. It says that Jesus is moved by faith. God's heart is moved by our faith. Sometimes we, we are so paralyzed that we don't know how to step out in faith when we don't know what's going on. These friends, they didn't have a clue what would happen when they took it. They could only hope, right? They could only hope that Jesus would do something. And the roof gets ripped off. And the man gets lowered. And then Jesus says something important. He doesn't heal the man on the outside. He heals him on the inside first. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. The most powerful words that we have in our vocabulary sometimes are simple words. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves that, A, we are a forgiven people, that those who are in Christ, your sins have been forgiven. You need to quit punishing yourself for anything and everything that you've ever done because your sins have already been forgiven. And these words are so valuable to this man because in that culture, in Jewish culture, if you had even a toe ache, right, a toothache, something bad, you did something bad. That's why you have that. Right? That's what they believed. That's what they thought in their culture. By the way, that still prevails in human understanding today. That if something happens bad, if someone gets cancer, if someone gets COVID, or someone gets, oh, they must be bad. And the reality is that's, it's just, I'm going to be, I'm going to keep something really clear for you. That even when bad things happen to good th people and bad things happen to good people, it just is what it is. How we respond to it is what's in us. And these friends, they, they, they had to carry this man. Number one, if you've ever carried another human being, uh, pregnancy aside, <laughs> it's hard work. Carrying a grown adult's even harder. They, they carry them. They would have had to carry him also in shame. So this guy would have been in shame. He would have been begging on the corner, uh, wondering where his next meal was coming from, wondering, uh, am I good enough? All of those things had to be going through his mind because he was sitting on a mat every single day outside the city or inside the city, somewhere begging for money, begging for food, wondering to God himself, am I good enough? Why has this happened to me. Indeed, each of us have wrestled with that question. The very first moment of my own faith that I can, the furthest memory that I can really have back is, in fact, I posted about it this week on January 22nd, 1994. On January 22nd, 1994, my 16-year-old cousin died. He was on his way to go to Florida State football. And in a few more years, Bobby Bowden had already recruited him because his, uh, his dad played football at Florida State back in the late 60s. And so there was a legacy there. Like he was destined for good things. He was a good human being. He was, but he got into a car wreck. And my first response being in, you know, a young guy, 14 years old, was I was angry at God. 
By the way, God can handle you being angry at him. It's okay. There's some of you in the room that are wondering that at times. Is it okay to be angry at God? It's okay. He can handle it. But for years, I wrestled with that. But the most important thing that my cousin did for me was a passing on his faith. Because I can still remember walking down that dirt road on the way back to the back hay field uh, after we had been out riding horses all day. And, and I get there, and finally I have this, this moment, and he just shares with me. Because the night before, I had done something really stupid. You know, teenagers, we do things stupid at times. And I, and I flat out had a cussing fit at 14 years, 13 years old. And he asked me, he said, he goes, why do you talk like that? Why do you live like that? Let me share Jesus with you. And it was just a simple thing. But he planted the seeds of the gospel in me in that moment. Many times bad things are going to happen in our lives. And God says he works all things for our good. All things. The good and the bad things. But it's only when we make room for it. These friends were carrying somebody who by society standard was looked down upon. Somebody who was not worthy. Most people walked past him. But these four friends decided, not today. He's getting to Jesus. What would happen if we began to look at people, regardless of their socioeconomic status, and said, you know what? I'm not going to pass you by today. I'm going to pick you up if I have to. I'm going to drag you if I have to. What would happen What if we no longer cared about our own reputation and we just said, no matter what, we've got to get people to know Jesus? What would happen to us? I think people would run into a gospel. Last week we talked about the nets, right? The gospel nets. The nets that we cast. The nets of love. The nets of kindness. The nets of joy. That is the nets of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the words that people need to still hear today are the same that they were back then. Your sins are forgiven. It's interesting, though. It's interesting that the very next thing that happens is kind of this, well, some say that spooky supernatural moment, right? Jesus can kind of perceive what's happening in their hearts. You know, and he answers Which is easier? It's interesting that there was another roof that was wrecked in that same moment. The religious people, the scribes, the teachers, the people that were supposed to know the same thing that Jesus knew. They were the ones with hardened hearts, hardened faces, and even, dare I say it, hardened minds. Who is this guy? What authority does he have? Only God can forgive sins. Yet Jesus knew something they didn't know. (laughs) He was God. And he was going to be ushering in the kingdom of God. And it had already started. And he passes on his authority. I wonder if we need to hear that a little bit more today. That it's our job to help pass on forgiveness that Christ offers. When we know that someone who's beaten themselves up about a divorce, beaten themselves up about a marriage or a relationship or a bad decision, that they need to hear the comforting words of Jesus again. Except it's the Jesus that's in you. You are forgiven. I know you're not perfect. Neither am I. But you are forgiven. Jesus was ripping the roof off of their bad theology. He was ripping and opening a doorway for his kingdom to take the precedent, to lead the way. Theirs was a culture of shame or honor. And he was ushering in a kingdom of love and humility. He even asked the rhetorical question, Which is easier, forgive him or heal him? Can you imagine being faced with that question? Forgive or heal? And Jesus is like, the answer is both. 
That is the mission of the church. Jesus himself said this was not supposed to be a country club. He didn't say it quite that way, but this was supposed to be a hospital for broken people. We're just all in different wings of the hospital. We're still in recovery of our identity in Christ at times that we still need to hear those words. You are forgiven. We are forgiven. I am forgiven. When we think about the gospel story this morning, where can you see yourself? Where do you see this being applicable to your own life? And I dare say, there's somebody somewhere in each of our lives that we ourselves have wronged. We've stepped on the toes of, we've hurt the feelings of. Sometimes knowingly and sometimes unknowing. I pray that you would pray through that this week and pick up the phone and call somebody and say, you know what? I want to tell you something. I am sorry for what I did and I hope that you can forgive me. And maybe in the same way you can also say you are forgiven too. Only to hear that reply, what are you talking about? I'm forgiving you for what? What am I forgiving you for? You know how that goes. They're like, I don't even remember what we were mad about. <laughs> Neither do I. But I just want to make sure. The world needs to see Christians be disciples. Be disciples and make disciples. To no longer scoff at forgiveness and just say, Preacher, that's real easy. You don't know what they done did to me. I'm going to get outrageous here in a minute. You don't know what they did to you. It don't matter. Offer it anyway. <laughs> because unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. <laughs> and that's the thing that happens to us. Is we start getting, that's why there's so many bitter Christians in the world. Who ain't got no joy because they just keep sipping from unforgiveness. When Christ says, I want you to come over here to this side and drink from forgiveness. And when you drink from something and you know something and you begin to fill yourself up with it, it begins to overflow into all areas of your life. Forgiveness becomes a way of life. And the problem is that we are walking around at times with an empty cup of forgiveness. And I want to tell you today, fill up on that cup. Fill up on it. Because the reason that we aren't becoming Matt Carrier faith is because we aren't filled up ourselves. We are, we're more like the paralyzed man being lowered down in the mat. That we need to remember that it was at one point in one time that we were more like that paralyzed man going nowhere. Until we came to know Jesus. The one who sets us free. And then he turns. He turns to the man and he says... Not only are your sins forgiven, get up and walk. Christ is saying that same thing to his church today. You are forgiven. Now get up and walk. I said last week, we need, I need someone to make me a go fishing sign. So that way, you know, churches have that. You can see it at the Baptist church. When they come out of church, they have signs that say, uh, go, you're entering the mission field. <laughs> I was like, that ain't going to work for my people. Well, I'm going to say something else. Let's go fishing. Let's go fishing when we leave here. Let's be mat carriers. Let's be net throwers. Let's be the people who say, you know what? I don't know all my theology, and I don't need to know it. I'll just, I just know Jesus forgives me. That's enough. That is enough. And then... You can bring them to church and then you can tell them more about your relationship and your testimony, how God has forgiven you and done things in your life. Because you know what the most powerful story on earth is, aside from the gospel, is your story and the gospel combined. If we want to see this area, Satsuma, turned upside down. Because I can tell you right now, if you want to see how, what people's hearts are really like, go on the, uh, the Facebook page, uh, No Mold Voices, <laughs> uh, Voices of Satsuma. You'll see some real interesting things, really interesting things. Things that will make you go, what are they talking about? 
But it's also a place for us not to just eat up gossip, but a place for us to pray. Say, Lord, help me to help them. And if I ain't the one to help them, then Father, find somebody else. Because by the way, this is probably a word for somebody. Uh, he didn't call you to fix everything. Quit trying. Because <laughs> sometimes we are so busy trying to fix everything that we can't fix anything. I think I, we would rather fix an anything than, an, than try to fix everything. Amen? That made sense in my head anyway. But as we leave this place today, as we get ready to just stop for a moment and worship God one more time, we need to remember and hear these words, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. It's the first step of entering into holiness. Let us pray. Lord God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to share your word. And as we are invited at this hymn, we need to remember to take time. Take time to be holy. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters in here, and I ask that you would just let these words ring true in their heart as they hear them. You are forgiven. In Jesus' name. And everybody said. Closing him, would you stand with me as we sing, Take Time to Be Holy. Would you join? y'all sound good today you sound good today I think for some of you in the room it was a moment that you needed to hear again you are forgiven now as you leave this place receive this benediction Heavenly Father I pray that you would bless my brothers and sisters in Christ that I send them today to go fishing for the gospel send them with your grace your peace, your mercy, and your love that is never ending. But most of all, arm them with forgiveness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be a disciple, make disciples, and serve with love. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Yeah. Uh-huh.